everyone and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I will be talking about my top 10 favorite mystery and suspense romances. Over the last couple of months, I've done this type of video where I pick a romance subgenre and I do a whole video dedicated to that subgenre and share my top 10 favorites. I have done one on dark romance and on fantasy, paranormal, and sci-fi romances. I will link both of those videos down below. Today's video is obviously about my favorite mystery and suspense romances. I feel like in my favorite dark romances a lot of that was like mafia or crime involved. These are more like murders, and mysteries. The point of the story is the mystery or the suspense aspect. The ones I'm going to mention in my top 10 today don't come to mind when I think of dark romance. Like these ones specifically I think of when I think of mystery and suspense romances. So if you watch this video and you're wondering why I didn't mention any mafia romances, that's because those were all included in my dark romance favorites. I do feel like it's kind of complicated because dark romance I feel like can be mystery and suspense romances but I don't know I just wanted this one to be mainly where the suspense and the mystery aspect is the main point of the story. I also would love some more recommendations for mystery romances and romance suspense. I don't really feel like I read a lot of the genre, so I would love more recommendations. If you have any, please leave them down below. These are obviously my top 10 favorite mystery and suspense romances. I'm going to go in from number 10 to number 1. So coming in at number 10 is Engagement and Espionage by Penny Reed. I didn't know if I should include this book in this video because it's technically not really a mystery. It's like a cozy mystery. That's why it's at number 10 because I, I don't necessarily think of this as a mystery but I know it has a mystery element. I'm just including it in this video, whatever. Like this is, it's one of my favorites and it has a mystery element. This is technically a spin-off of the Winston Brothers, specifically Beard Science, which is the third book in that series. This continues Jen and Cletus's story. You don't have to read Beard Science, it is helpful because that is the start of their story. So this follows Jen and Cletus who are engaged and they're just trying to make their relationship work and to slowly plan a wedding and Jen's a baker and she relies on the local farmers for their ingredients and produce and all of that stuff and one day she tries to go to one of the local farmers for their eggs I do believe and for some reason pretty much all of his chickens are dead and he doesn't really have an answer for Jen like why what happened who did it and she starts to realize that more farmers are suddenly not wanting to give her ingredients and produce and things for her to bake. So her and Cletus kind of figure that somebody is sabotaging them and they're trying to figure out why no one wants to help them and why Jen suddenly has all these farmers not wanting to help her anymore. It's really just a cozy and cute mystery of who is trying to sabotage Jen and Cletus and who's trying to sabotage their happiness. I love Cletus and Jen. They are so cute together and so wonderful. I love them and I love the whole Winston Brothers family. This is one of my favorite books of all time. Sadly, I did have to put it at number 10 on this list because it's not a true mystery romance. It's just a very cozy, cute mystery. But I do feel like this is a good introduction to mystery romance. If you have never really read the genre before and you want something very simple to kind of ease you into it, I would definitely recommend this one. Coming in at number nine is Till Death by Jennifer L. Ermitrouts. This follows Sasha who's returning to her hometown after 10 years when she escaped a serial killer. Being back home obviously brings up all of these traumatic memories for Sasha and she suddenly gets a threat that really, really scares her. Some girls go missing. I think a couple of bodies turn up. And our male character, Cole, who's an FBI agent, promises to protect Sasha like he couldn't 10 years ago. So it's kind of a second chance romance as well. I read this years ago and I remember really enjoying it. I found it very unpredictable. I didn't guess the killer. I had no idea of all of the revelations. I found it very interesting and I feel like this is definitely one of JLA's most underrated books. Like I never hear anybody talk about this book ever and I thought it was a fantastic mystery and suspense. I really enjoyed it and I really liked 
the romance. Coming in at number eight is First Touch by Laurelyn Page. This is actually part of a duology. The second book is Last Kiss. I didn't love the second book that much. I definitely preferred the first book, but it is a duology. So First Touch follows Emily, who gets a very suspicious and cryptic phone call from a former friend, and she becomes very, very worried that something is wrong. She honestly thinks that something happened to her friend and she needs help. So she decides to drop everything and to start tracking her friend. She tries to find out clues of what happened to her, who she hung out with, like what circles she was involved in, and who she was possibly dating. She really tries to find her friend through all of these connections. And while she's trying to find information about her friend, she comes across our male character, Reeve. He's a very mysterious and powerful man, but he has a lot of secrets. Emily tries not to get too close to him, but she also wants to know if he was involved with anything about her friend. So it's kind of like this dangerous mystery of her trying not to get too close, but also wanting to get close enough and her possibly falling in love with this man that she doesn't know a lot about. I thought it was really interesting. Like I said, I did prefer the first book over the second book. I just didn't like the direction that the second book went in, but I really enjoyed the first book. I do think it is a pretty good duology. I thought the romance was super captivating and intense, and I thought the story itself was very different. I just thought it was a great mystery suspense romance, and obviously it is one of my favorites. Coming in at number seven is Naked and Death by J.D. Robb. This was Eve who is working on this case, and she's trying to track down this killer, and she ends up falling in love with Rourke, who is actually a suspect in her murder case. I feel like it's good to go into this book not knowing very much. I really didn't know anything except that it was about a detective or lieutenant. Yeah, lieutenant. And I really enjoyed this. I read this earlier this year and I really liked it. I can't wait to continue the series. I own the next two books. I haven't read them yet, but I really want to get back into the series once I'm in the mood to read a mystery again. I really liked Eve. I thought she was a very fascinating character and I really enjoyed Rourke. I love how this book had a decent amount of romance, but it was also heavily a mystery and it was like the mystery was the main point of the story but the romance was kind of in the background. I can see why Nora Roberts continues to write in the series and in this world. It's very interesting, very different. I really enjoyed this first book and I'm very excited to continue the series. It's definitely obviously a new favorite. Coming in at number six is Gypsy King and Riven Knight by Devney Perry. This is book one and book two in the Clifton Forge series. I think she changed the name of this series. It used to be called the Tin Gypsy series. The whole series has a suspense romance aspect, but I personally only love the first two books. I like the rest of the series, but the first two books stand out to me the most. The first book, Gypsy King, is a hate-to-love romance. It follows our female character who is new to town, and she is the new owner of the local newspaper. She really wants to get like the next story for the town. She's kind of bored with just basic announcements and news. And suddenly there is a murder in the town and all signs point to the former motorcycle club. And she decides to go to the former leader of the club, Dash, and they immediately do not get along. He does not like her, he doesn't want her poking around, and she just wants to get this news, she wants to get this story. And the second book, Riven Nights, I'm not really gonna go much into detail because the mystery aspect continues in this next book, but it does feature different main characters. This one is a marriage of convenience and friends to lovers. Something happened at the end of Gypsy King that forces Genevieve and Isaiah to get married so that they don't have to testify against each other. I loved both of these couples. I loved this whole small town. I loved the mystery aspect. I didn't see any of the situations happening. Like I couldn't guess the killer. I couldn't guess who was connected to who. I just found it very interesting and like I said, loved both romances and these are definitely some of my favorites by Devney Perry. I just thought it was very interesting and very different. It wasn't super dark, but it wasn't also a light mystery. Like, it had some dark, intense moments, and it deals with a lot of 
dark topics, but it didn't feel super heavy and hard to read. I just really loved these books. They were really good, and I highly recommend the first two books in the series, but I do recommend the series. I did like the rest of the books in the series. These two just stand out to me a lot more. Coming in at number five is the Deanna Madden trilogy. This was also another one I wasn't sure if I should include it because it doesn't really have a romance, but I feel like if you're a romance lover and you want to read a mystery, this is a really good series to read. The first book is The Girl in 6 E. The second book is Do Not Disturb, and the third and final book is If You Dare. This, I feel like, is a series that is good to go in knowing nothing. The basic premise of this series is about Deanna Maiden who doesn't leave her apartment. On the back it says, my life is simple as long as I follow the rules. One, don't leave the apartment. Two, never let anyone in. And three, don't kill anyone. I have obeyed these rules for three years, but rules were made to be broken. It is so interesting, so fascinating, so different. It was so different from anything I had ever read before. Did I say who the author was? I feel like I didn't mention, but it's A.R. Tor. She actually writes a lot of romance titles, so it's also kind of why I decided to put this on this list is because the author has written romance before, and I feel like if you want a little bit of romance, in your mystery, thriller, suspense, this is the series for you. It has a small element of romance. It's not super overpowering to the story. It also kind of was like a little bit erotica. I mean, our female character is like a cam girl and stuff. Like she does online cam stuff. So it's a little different. I couldn't put this series down. I thought it was super addicting. I read all of the books back to back and really loved them and I just had to include them on this list, even though they're not super romance heavy. Coming in at number four is the Sugar Bowl series by Sawyer Bennett. The first book is Sugar Daddy, book two is Sugar Rush, and book three is Sugar Free. This trilogy follows Sila, who was assaulted when she was 16, and she has always kind of been dead set on getting revenge, and she one day comes across this commercial for this like escort service i do believe yeah the sugar bowl and she decides the only way that she can get close to this guy to take revenge is to join the sugar bowl and to kind of get mixed up into his world but once she starts getting involved in the world she comes in contact with beckett who is that guy's business partner and like the co-owner of the sugar bowl. She now has a better way in, but she obviously starts falling for Beckett and she doesn't know whether she can trust him or whether she is just gonna ruin everything. I don't feel like I'm explaining this very well, but our female character just wants to take revenge. I remember reading the first book. I have actual very vivid memories of reading the first book. I got it as an e-arc on NetGalley and I loved it. I had no idea where the story was going to go. I really enjoyed the characters and I liked the romance. It's definitely a little bit darker, but it's not super dark, I would say. I love the direction that the series went in. I never really read anything like this before and I really enjoyed it. So I highly recommend the series. I feel like nobody has read it or talked about it and I thought it was a fantastic mystery romance. Coming in at number three is the De Vincent trilogy by Jennifer L. Armentrout. The first book is Moonlight Sins, book two is Moonlight Seduction, and book three is Moonlight Scandals. This series mainly follows three brothers who live in this very mysterious, dark mansion, and there's kind of like this whole mystery surrounding their family and the De Vincent name. There are stories about women who get close to the De Vincent men and how it never ends well for them. There's like this whole dark, atmospheric mystery surrounding the family and the house that they live in. It's so interesting, so different. There's kind of this paranormal aspect as well. Like, it's not really paranormal, but it kind of is. Like, it kind of makes you guess, oh, is this a paranormal aspect? Is it not? 
I love how that was done in this series. The first book in the series is definitely the weakest. I really loved the second and third book the most. The second book does feature a character named Nicolette and it has my exact spelling of my name which is nice. I actually really really loved this one. This one is like an age gap romance. I just thought the series was so different and I personally really love mysteries that surround like families and like a whole family legacy and a creepy house. I just thought these were really interesting and honestly these kind of would make like a great TV show now that I'm thinking about it. These were really fun, kind of creepy, but really refreshing in a weird way. I don't know. I just really loved this whole trilogy and again this is one series by JLA that is very underrated. Coming in at number two is Keep Her Safe by K.A. Tucker. This follows Noah whose mother is a police chief and one night she's drunk and he comes home and she starts kind of talking about these secrets and like things that don't really make sense. He kind of just brushes it off that she's drunk and they'll have a proper conversation in the morning but I think while he's in the shower or something, I can't fully remember, she ends up dead. Everybody immediately rolls it as a suicide, but Noah feels that it is something much more. He feels like his mother was murdered. He doesn't feel like she would actually do something like that. So he kind of starts poking around and he tries to kind of figure out what she was talking about before she died. And he ends up going to Gracie, whose father was his mother's partner like detective partner back in the day, but he was murdered and Gracie kind of moved away and her family had nothing to do with that town and the police station and all of that. So Noah goes to Gracie and he tries to figure out what exactly happened to her dad as well because he thinks that both of their parents were murdered for something bigger that they knew about and they just now try to team up and figure out exactly what happened to both of their parents. I loved this book. I read it, I think, last year? Did I read it last year? I think so. But I loved the mystery aspect in here. I loved the romance. It wasn't super overpowering, but it was enough to keep me wanting to read and find out about their romance. I cried at, like, the end of this book. I cried about their parents and, like, knowing about them, like, finding each other after all these years. I thought the mystery was so captivating. Again, so many things I didn't see coming. I just thought it was really, really well done and this is one of my favorite books by K.A. Tucker. Obviously, it's my top two favorite mystery romance of all time. I thought it was just so good, so interesting, and I really loved it. And finally, coming in at number one, this is my favorite mystery and suspense romance. That is Love Game by Tracy Wolf. This follows Ian, who is a true crime novelist, and he gets the opportunity to interview and follow around our female character, Veronica, who is a daughter of one of Hollywood's golden couples, and she's kind of an up-and-coming actress herself, and he gets the opportunity to interview her and just get to know her before I think one of her big film debuts. But even though Veronica has been brought up in the public eye, she also has a very traumatic past. Something happened to her when she was a lot younger. There are some ties between Ian's previous or current research that he's doing on a specific killer. There are certain ties that lead to Veronica. So he's trying to not only get to know her, but try to write this article about this killer or this expose, I think, but they spend way too much time together and their feelings grow for each other. This, again, I'm not explaining very well, but it is so good. This is obviously my favorite mystery suspense romance. It was so captivating. I feel like I'm just saying the same words for every book, but I do feel like this one is so captivating, so interesting, just so different and unique. I had never read something like this before. I actually 
have very vivid memories of reading this book as well. I got this as an e-arc from NetGalley and I read it the night it was actually supposed to come out and I ended up binging it and completely reading it in one sitting. I couldn't stop reading it. I thought it was so addicting. This was like nothing I had ever read before and I loved the romance. It was kind of, I don't really want to say it was like erotic because there was some very steamy sex scenes. It had a decent amount of heavy like mystery and suspense and like finding out what their connection is and what they have in common and also like a very heavy amount of like romance and I loved the end of this book. I loved it. Honestly, immediately after I finished reading it, I started rereading it again because I really loved this book and I was trying to like pick up on all the things. I was trying to reread it to see if I could figure out what was coming because I just felt so blindsided. I just truly thought it was fantastic. This, again, is another book I never hear anybody talk about. It is so good. I wish there were print copies available. I would love to own a physical copy of this book. I need to reread it. It's been a while, but I think I also included this in my top 10 favorite books of all time video that I did like years and years ago. I just really love this book. It is one of my favorites of all time. I really want more people to read it, so if you want a really good, dark, mystery romance, I highly, highly recommend this one. So those were all top 10 of my favorite mystery and suspense romances. Let me know if you have read any of these books and what your thoughts are on them, and let me know what your favorite mystery and suspense romances are, and if you have any recommendations for me, please leave them down below. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to give this video a like, subscribe, follow me on all my other social media, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!